So you've heard us talk about Joy Events for quite some time now. It's our favorite event planning and scheduling software for conferences, meetings, music festivals, and conventions. You can manage your program, assign tasks, create run of shows, and you can build your event agenda and publish it to your website, all easily and, and in some cases in minutes. That alone justifies going all in. But wait, there's more. They have some new features that we love, and on this episode, Tess and I are going to tell you about their new resource, asset, and budget features, which might make Joy the ultimate giant killer in the event management space. Let's get to it. Tess. Here. We're back. We are in 2023. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> and today, we're actually following up. We've been, we've been talking about, with a lot of people, um, Joy Events for a long time. It is, in my opinion, um, probably one of the best event management platforms that has ever been created. Um, Absolutely. Ding, 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 ding. Yep. They, they're, they're not messing around. They... They don't do registration because it's not a registration tool. It is an event management tool. Um, you know, they they allow you to easily put your conference schedule on a website, right? That is something that everybody needs. Um, it allows you to do scheduling and all tasks and all this other stuff. And an on-site schedule that stays up to date. <laughs> yes, and that on-site schedule that stays up to date. You can build a run of show in it. Um, and the first thing that caught my eye about Joy was always that it was super affordable, right? So it was one of those things that any small or medium-sized association or organization or even a large one that doesn't- Or a small people. agency, you know, a small a independent planner can just wrap their heads around and handle multiple clients in. Yep, and it's not going to break the bank, which was which is always my biggest thing about all of the, the huge players in that space. Um, you know, they have these mon monstrous tools, right, that, that cost so much money. And, and Joy was like, no, you just need something that works and something that's affordable. And so they've created it. But now they have three things that, that they've added that actually kind of propel them past the other, the other event management systems that are out there. And you know, those three things are resources that you can now add, and we'll, we'll get into the what they are, the resources, assets, and a budget tool. What, 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 <laughs> what, 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 what? You mean I can do my budget along with planning the event, along with telling people what they need to do and taking asset, taking things from them and do on-site in one and place? On I, it, you know, it's one of those things where, you bring me joy. <laughs> yes, no, I can't joy. sing. Joy back <laughs> the I got to bring Anita Baker into that one, Kate. Well, Sorry. you know, it's one of those things where it, it, this is a tool to replace all the other tools, right? So it, it's meant to replace Excel, right? Because most planners are out there using Excel. They're emailing spreadsheets around with programs in it and all this. Or stuff. they are actually planning their event through email. Through, yeah. <laughs> I have got, I have still have a couple of those clients, um, but it, it's meant to replace those. And, and they're doing these nice, beautiful incremental, um, incremental improvements that just bring more and more to it. Like for example, resources, right? So again, it's not registration software, no. it's, man, it's event management software. So your resources are those things, people that you're bringing in, you know, whether they're volunteers, whether they're vendors, whether they're those types of people. Or from an independent planner perspective, you have someone who just manages speaker, done doing speaker management, who's just managing exhibitors, right? So there are different things around the resources for that particular person you can bring in and add in there. Yes, um, and and that's huge, right? Because again, they're not getting lost in in the, the whole attendee mess, right? That you know these are, you know these are the people that are helping you run your event. The next thing that they added were assets. Yeah. And you know, and what are assets? And I, you know, you know, this is a podcast, right? So we're we're not showing everybody the, like these in depth things that it can do, and we're only kind of skimming the surface. But, you know, when you look at an asset, right, and you're going to you're going to think of it like a banner stand, 
right? That's yeah. a, that's a singular asset. Or but, signage. Yeah, or yeah, the signage, right? And so you can actually go in and put in all your signage as assets and then assign them to certain places <laughs> and, and then assign it to a person. A so, place and a person. Yeah, like like you know, it's really you know, we just had a, a conference for a client last week in, in in Chicago and you know, we're able to assign you know, okay, the signage on day one is gonna be placed all around the hotel and April's gonna do that. And she's gonna do it at nine AM. She's gonna place this sign here and at ten AM she's gonna place this asset here. Those are just you know, unbelievably small things that take if if you are the say the lead planner you are no longer on site having to worry about those tiny little details because your people have they know what they need to do it's all there it's all written out so you can actually concentrate on on the attendee experience and the program to make your event really you know take it to that next level you're not busy chasing down so and so to ask them if did the sign for the lunch go out Exactly. And you can communicate with it. And the beautiful thing is, you know, Keith, that's why I really truly started my business is to focus on executing. That's why it's called I social execution, right? And those little things that planners have tended can have tendencies of missing or forgetting, because I call it deer in headlight syndrome, where you've made the plan, but then the day of you're just expecting all of your vendors to just come together and magically do it. But oftentimes don't assign a physical person to make sure those details actually happen. So when you're doing your briefing every single day, they each person with their responsibility can just have their portion of what in the world they're supposed to do. And you're just going over the overall schedule for, you know, for what's happening, but everyone, and then when they have it, tick the box and boom, and you'll know. Yeah. Well, and you know what, I, and one of the things that, that I found particularly cool was, you know, they didn't do an app, right? But they created, they created an unbelievably mobile responsive website so that you can have it in the palm of your hand as you're walking around, mm -hmm. you know, the venue, um, right. you know, you can go, oh, we're, we're almost not even talking about the new budget feature. Oh, geez. We just skipped over that. We're, this is the big baby right here. Keith, how did we do that? But in terms of non-response to that, it's a wonderful thing because then anybody can use it at any time and they don't have to feel like they need to download anything. Yeah, and it works great on an iPad. It works great on a mobile phone. I've looked at it on iOS devices, and you know, I'm a I'm a Sam, an Android guy, so I have a Samsung. It looks absolutely phenomenal. Works great on my computer. You know, I've got three events running in Joy right now. Um, yeah, and I've got one running uh, prepping now. Yeah, but you know, but the new budget tool. This is actually the one new item that they have that truly sets it apart from all the others. Um, and I don't know that our little conversation here is gonna do it justice. Um, I do know uh, that Rob, um, and and you know, just for complete transparency, we're actually helping Joy out with a little bit of marketing and things like that. Um, but a little they, bit, like we help everyone else out. But but they, they have no editorial control over what we say here. Um, but, I don't know if just a conversation about the budget tool can actually do it justice um, because it is amazingly powerful. You can use it in this way if you are an agency um, and you can use it this way if you are actually the end user, let's say you're an organization and you're internally planning the conference. You know, you can go in and you can request co quotes from vendors. Now, here's the cool thing, right? There are a couple other tools out there that allow you to request a quote from a hotel, but the hotel has to go in and they have to put in all the information about the quote. And we all know hotel salespeople are loath to do that. They're, they, they're like, what? I, I've, I've got this beautiful proposal right here. I'm not putting it, copy and pasting all that information in here. Well, enjoy, they only have to put in the top line number which when you're planning an event, that's really the only thing that matters at the beginning anyway. Um, and then they can attach their beautiful proposal that gives you all of the details. Now, if they wanted to go in and write in all the line items, they can certainly do that. Um, but you can collect all the quotes that way. And then when, when you've accepted the Marriott in Atlanta, you can just go in and say, accepted, and then move yeah. on to the budget. 
exactly. And and the interesting thing is um, that not only can I do that in real time, it will add to these numbers here, right? Which is kind of like your overall number. So you'll look at your revenue, your costs, and then you can look at your margins. But the, the cool thing I liked about it too, Keith, is as I'm adding things, if I wanted to kind of look at what my previous budget was, kind of a snapshot shot of what it was before I added that particular, let's say venue, because you said hotel at the time, I can look at it in two ways, previously and what I'm about to add and update. So I, I think the look back as well as the you know current looking forward is really cool. Yeah, and it does a really good job with actually getting you to the bottom line, right? What's your revenue going to be, you, you know? If you, if you are diligent and, you know, and, and any tool is only as good as the data you put into it. So if, if you put in your, your data diligently, this thing is truly going to give you, you know, that final revenue, right? And the cool thing is if you're an agency, you can actually write in the budgeting tool, you can add on a fee. Mm -hmm. If you have an agency, like your agency fee. Yep. And the client's actually going to see that it will be spelled out. It will say fee. Now, if you are ordering um, signs from a sign vendor, perhaps, and maybe you mark those up, um, you can actually then add a markup and the markup actually is not visible to the end client, yeah, which um, is amazing and I, really great. Yeah. I, and I, you can also, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Keith, but oh, remember, oh. I want them to realize that this is not just cost for the event itself, but it's pre-event too. So I could put in my fees of what I charge my clients for and see what I, what my markup is, like what am I margin is, excuse me. And I can see exactly what I'm making on the event up against what the expenses are for the event as well. So you can look at it a couple of different ways and you can choose to do one or the other or just a combination of both. Yeah. And one of the things, you know, and again, I, I, I know we're not going to do this justice, you know, talking about no. it here in, a, in a 15 or 20 minute podcast episode, but, you know, even when it comes to time, right, you know, when you're setting up that event initially, let's say you're just in the, in the venue selection phase, you know, or the site selection phase, you, you know, you can go in there and you can put how many hours you think it's going to take, um, you know, an event, you know, whoever on your team is going to do that, how many hours, and then it'll actually, you can put in the unit rate on that person. So perhaps the hourly rate that they get, but then mm -hmm. there's the billable rate that the cl yep. actual end client sees. You can actually do both of those things so that you as the event organizer or the agency owner truly does have, um, you know, you have a, a clear picture of everything that has gone into this event and, and what the final numbers are. Yeah, yeah, it's powerful. It's very, very powerful because it doesn't live outside. It lives inside your process. So as you know, we love to try to focus on the journey of the event. And there's so many details and things that go into it. And we now have a tool that can help us capture those kinds of things. And I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And personally, I can't stand hourly rates. I think they should go away. I think hourly should be just at the point in time someone goes out of scope. And then you should be able to look at it and see. But we're spending often so many times, if we kind of look at it, and I know we're about to run out of time, Keith, but when we look at it, if you think about us being, I think, are we in the top three or at least the top five? I know the top 10 highly stressed jobs, right? Yeah. Across, across the world. Well, it's because we're doing all of these things. So if we kind of are able to rein in how we're spending our time, how much we're getting paid for it, and really look at it, I think this would give us a bigger picture to help us be able to look at, you know what, I'm not charging enough for this. Yeah. I realize now, now I have some proof around this and it can move forward. Internally, it's a great a tool for me to look at it that way. But I think also externally, you could be able to prove to some of your current clients um, how you, why you charge the rates that you charge, as well as maybe future clients to see, in a sense, you know, this is what an average budget looks like. And this is at, on average what goes into what I'm putting here in the proposal. I think there's so many different things you can do with this tool. Oh, I, I think if you are diligent, right, and if you are in here and you're putting your numbers in diligently, 
Like now, this is not a registration tool, but you put in your registration numbers, right? How many? Right, right, right. So that way, you have a clear picture of the revenue that you've generated, you know, from 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 registrations. If you're diligent, there is really something to be said for at any minute, any given second of any given day, you can simply pull it up and exactly see your PNL, your current PNL for 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 an event. Exactly. I mean, that's some heavy duty right there. It is. And it is. It is. I mean, and and it's it's easy, right? And it's it's the product to me itself is not the learning curve is almost zero. It is a right? lot. The logic is easy to kind of figure out. So it you throw it in people's hands and it's, you know, there it is. But I will say, um, for for folks, um, is there is learning. Right. It's not a steep learning curve. It is like, I, you know, I live right outside of Chicago. And so all of the streets in my neighborhood are kind of flat. You know, they got a little bit of a hill to them. That's the kind of learning curve. Right. It's that small hill. It's not a mountain. It is. It's not like learning Photoshop. It is not like no. um, using Cvent, which, again, is a huge, powerful tool. But the learning curve is massive. You know, this is this tool feels compact and light. Um, but it is extremely powerful. Um, but Tess. I was trying to get some information, some more information to see if we could share with our with our viewers and listeners at the same time. Um, and I think one thing that um, we should kind of send them off and home with, Keith, is think about what can free you up so that you can have those personal connections with your client. Yes. Um, and, you know, to, to wrap it all up and, and to close up this episode, you know, Joy offers a trial. Um, and, I, and I say this about any trial that someone's going to do, whether it's Joy or LinkedIn Gold or whatever they call it. Um, if you're going to start a trial, be ready to start the trial. Yes. Um, you know, get all of your stuff collected. Find out what, it, what information you're going to need, like your hotel costs and, you know, all those other things. And then start your trial and really go into it with the expectation that it's going to su succeed and that you're going to switch to whatever it is, whether it's LinkedIn or Joy. And, re you know, don't get that free trial and then wait until it's the day before that trial ends to try and see if it's the yeah. right fit for you because uh, you'll it'll end up in disaster right you yeah 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 definitely and if you want to you know um which is a great point everything these days have are our freemiums right it's free until it's not right so even if you want to create a fictitious event around something, and that is your test case to use for everything so you can benchmark it against each other, do so, but don't go in and uh, and wait and say, oh, I'll try it. It's easy. No, if you're really going to be serious about comparing technologies, um, do it with something that you can, you know, sink your teeth into and really get some good information from. Cool. Well, Tess, this was an excellent little episode to yeah. kick us off in 2023 our bites yes and we have some fabulous things coming up for you for the year that we've been cooking up so we really truly want you to pull up with us here okay what do you say to them and when pull up.com uh, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly um and then most importantly we just want you to share we want to build community we want you to give you a way to be able to contact us and to move forward and hopefully we can pull up with you as well 